feeling this tune. 11 minutes past 12, live with me, Rosemary Laye, with you until 1 o'clock. Emerson Ford will be here shortly after 12.30. But for now, it gives me great pleasure to welcome back to her Artist of the Month slot, contemporary sculptor, Sylvia Krupinska is in the house. How are you, Sylvia? Thank you, Rosemary. Very well, thanks. Good. I'm well, thank you. you. I know you've been very busy, haven't you? Yes, there have been pieces uh, and bits happening, or bits and pieces. <laughs> You were actually at the art fair, weren't you? The yes. one by um, Baker Street. I was participating at the other art fair uh, last weekend uh, and doing a masterclass of grape extraction, <laughs> which was, was great fun and good response from parents. So I'm really pleased and children. <laughs> for, for, for those who don't know your work on grape extraction, can you just briefly talk to us about the process? Yes, of course. Well, uh, the way I produce some of my sculptures, the plaster works, with plaster I cast grapes and then and I shape them into space, into the desired shape. And once the plaster sets, I try to excavate each grape individually, bit by bit. So uh, I achieve this tunneling effect. It's a hollow kind of texture coming in and out for the fish to swim in or just to look through for the light. Mm. And, and the finished uh, article is just stunning. Thank you. It is, it's stunning. And how many grapes do you actually hide in, in the plaster? Yes, and every time I think, oh, I've got to count them, but never. <laughs> never <laughs> it's just a, in a bunch of grapes, yes. a proper bunch, yeah, yeah. depending on the size. Mm. I like that. And, and I must ask you, I know we're not talking about you, but I know you're going to talk, introduce another artist. But, um, but where, where did you get the inspiration from for that particular piece? Um, I think from my playfulness. I love, mm. I used to use plasticine all the time and mm. I, I did the same technique using plasticine balls but I found that it's quite hard to get those out from the plaster and then I think, was thinking as I do organic sculpture mm. what can I use and then grapes were just perfect shape and size and the, the, the texture was very good and it, it happened to work. Fabulous. Of course our listeners will be able to see some of that on your blog which you'll let the, us know the details of later on I won't will, you? Good. Course, so your artist of the month please I'm very pleased to introduce this month's artist of the month and he is going to be uh, well he, he I'm going to talk about him for 20 minutes mm. and he is world acclaimed eco sculptor of British origin Jason Dicaris Taylor he's not only eco sculptor but also using his 16 year experience in diving and his underwater photography bringing his sculptures to us. What he does, he produces underwater living sculptures. Mm. He's also a founder and creator of the first world underwater sculpture park, which is a unique place uh, that is taking over 800 square meters in the area of Grenada in West Indies, uh, co uh, containing 65 sculptures, in, <laughs> which is incredible. The sculptures are like bodies, human-like figures attached to the seafloor. Now, he also a founder and creator and artistic director of the unique museum. It is Underwater Museum of uh, Art in uh, Mexico, in Cancun, mm -hmm. c having... 450 pieces installed <laughs> under the water, which is a vast number, <laughs> spreading over 420 square meters. And just, wait for this, yes. weighing 200 tons. Goodness me. Goodness me. That is a hefty project, isn't it? Yes. But you see, now my mind's gone straight to how do people get down underwater to see these works of art? Yes, you've got to be a diver. Uh, and I'll tell you more about how they're installed as well because diving is a very well part of installing process as well mm -hmm. and there are some sculptures that can be visible from outside of water too but that will be later on mm -hmm. uh, now Jason DeCaris Taylor as I told you now he produces these sculptures of human figures but also combining those with day-to-day -day objects for example sofa or a bicycle or a desk one of its biggest and most challenging uh, sculptures to install was a cast of real size cast of the Volkswagen Beetle car mm -hmm. weighing <laughs> four tons <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> yes that, that's quite a, a bit of a challenge yes indeed and, and what, what material is he using yes that's exactly what I was going to tell you now it's made from special marine grade cement uh, it's, it's a cement with additives that's because the salt water is so aggressive mm -hmm. so it's there are additives to to kind of repel the salt and there are also 
uh, it's pH neutral, so it protects the, the, the sculpture. And the sculptures last for hundreds of years, it's wow. predicted at least, yes. Wow, and of course, the, the, so that's where he gets the eco from, because uh, because it's pH neutral, isn't it? Yes. And it's not going to be affecting it's any living... It's not toxic in what, n- no way whatsoever. It's been developed with the scientists and mm. it's all approved, which is good uh, Good to know mm. um, that the artists like him, they really care about the environment. Yes, yes. So, so, so where did Jason get this, I suppose, this vision from that he wanted to actually have his sculptures underwater? He is a keen diver. He he trained as a professional diver too. And uh, like I said, early 16-year experience of mm. diving opened up the world, what is beneath, that we not always see is <laughs> under the water. And having the, seen the change in the environment uh, and decline of coral and natural coral reefs mm-hmm. made him think that he could probably do something. He's been classically trained. He knows how to sculpt, studied uh, at the Institute in London, mm-hmm. uh, in Camberwell, Camberwell College of Art. So he's got the education for it and he combined the idea and the practical skills and just went for it. Mm. And is he, is, is he UK-based? He's based living at the moment in, in Cancun in Mexico, where right. he works in his uh, museum. Okay, the museum is located in Cancun, Mexico. Yes. Okay, that's yes. the city of partying, that is, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so after you've partied, you fancy underwater partying, you just get on <laughs> the swimsuit and yes. off you go. Okay, yes. and how did you get to know about this sculptor? Um, I receive an uh, alumni newsletter um, and for years and years I was admirer of his work mm. um, and, uh, and, and just thought he's all, ab- all about that. I believe in his organic work, eco-friendly, in incredible remote places you've got to die for and die for really. <laughs> And uh, and his main purpose of why he does it is really I really believe in this as well is to to uh, protect and uh, and revive the natural coral reefs. Wow! The way he does it, for example, the museum it directs away the the, na- the tourists that come to the area mm. of Cancun, for example, and brings them to his sculpture park. Uh, the, the sea life and the animal, well, the, the, all the corals, they just love his work because mm. they attach to it and they thrive on it. Um, so in the previously bland sand seafloor, now there is this amazing sculpture park uh, where people can go and dive there. It's quite incredible. Incredible. It sounds incredible. If you just tuned in, welcome along. Sylvia Krapinska is talking about her artist of the month, who is Jason DeCaris, did you say? Yes, DeCaris Taylor. Taylor. Artist Sylvia Krapinska is still in the house talking about her artist of the month, who is an eco sculptor called Jason DeCaris Taylor. This is just so interesting. So, like, just to recap, Jason sculptors eco sculptors and he actually installs his sculptors under the water correct yes correct. i was listening (laughs) (laughs) so you're going to talk to us about some of his work can't you yes it's a a true joy really to get inside into his work Uh, i talked to jason um and he told me um rather excitingly that previous day he installed three new sculptures under the water the installation of those sculptures had been cancelled 40 times before due to bad weather or other conditions, mm. which I found quite incredible. The patience you have to wait for such a long time to eventually install these very heavy pieces, yes, but it's, it's quite fascinating. So the, it, the installation was cancelled 40 times, 40 four zero four times. Four zero, yes. Goodness me, he's persistent, isn't he? Yes. If it was me, I think I might <laughs> say, do you know what? Obviously nature is saying that it's not meant to be, <laughs> But it, ha- it has been installed now after the 41st been, it has been installed attempt <laughs> in the museum in Cancun. Um, the piece uh, I really loved is called The Listener. The Listener is a sculpture of a human figure that was made in collaboration with marine biologist Heather Spence. And also she's researching bio music. So the secret of the sculpture is inside there is a hydrophone installed. What is a hydrophone? It's a device that once submerged in water, it measures and records the sounds that the animals in the sea life and the surroundings produce to help the, the researchers and the biologists to wow. do, their, do their research. Yes. Uh, as well as working with the marine biologists, he worked on these projects with the, with the community college in Cancun, the children, the students there, um, cast their ears 
all those years, years from their bodies had been attached, uh, of course, made from cement, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and attached on the, on the body of the sculpture. So you can see hundreds of nothing else, just the ears <laughs> all around, um, which is a kind of a, a message, a signal saying to the young generation, listen to this. It's very important. Preserve your coral reefs ri- coral mm. before they disappear. So I really like that kind of mm. insight. What's the name of that project with all the ears? That's called The Listener. The culture. Listener, yeah, that yeah. makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, you know, it must be wonderful for the children to be part of that project as well. Indeed, I think it's very important. And that's one of the major sort of aspects of his educational work um, through the sculpting, bringing the eco themes uh, to, to people's minds and awareness of them, really. Mm. Um, my favourite sculpture, Angel, called Angel, um, he uses recycling materials now with a twist. I've never seen anything like it. He recycled coral fans that were washed out on the beaches in Cancun after the storm. They, they do get some stormy mm. weather there. Um, picking those up and installing on the female figure of an angel. So on her body, creating kinetic sculpture by floating wings on her on oh, her wow. back. So uh, the, the images actually of this one, hasn't been, they haven't been released yet because it's brand new installed mm. only last week but this is a bit of a you can say a little bit of an exclusive <laughs> yes indeed so and what and, and the wings actually moving is it they do oh, move wow. yes because the coral becomes alive again and then grows and after some time it will grow bigger and bigger and hopefully will be healthy for a very long time wow this is fascinating but you see now with all these wonderful works of art we can't go to Grenada or Cancun to see these things so um, where <laughs> else can we go if any <laughs> yes I know and uh, all these remote places I asked Jason <laughs> Would you like to do sculpture in, in a mood or desert? And he said he's got one planned for Antarctica. Has he? Yes. <laughs> so we can't go to Antarctica, <laughs> but we can go to different places, for example, here in the in, in, uh, UK oh, as good. well. One of them is in Canterbury. Mm-hmm. That's a place uh, in Kent. And there is a sculpture called Alluvia. It's a two-female figure sculpture installed in a river. So you don't have to dive. <laughs> you can see them from a Westgate bridge, which is fantastic. Now, if you are a keen diver in England, you don't have to go to Cancun or Grenada. You can go to the National Dive Diving Centre in Chepstow. There's a sculptor attached to the bottom of the floating platform on, of a lake that they have for, the, for diving, and uh, it's there for the divers to explore and visit. Or if you're in New York later in, at the end of June, you can go and see his amazing new solo exhibition uh, that will be opening in Jonathan Levitt Gallery. He's a solo show of video, new, new videos, photographs, and he's going to bring some small sculptures out of the sea and mm. preserve those in resin so people can admire, again, not having to dive. <laughs> <laughs> he's a global eco-sculptor, isn't he? <laughs> yes. And I like the idea, you know, of obviously diving and... And then at the bottom of the seabed, suddenly you got this wonderful work of oh. art. What a treat. Oh, I'd love to learn how to dive. <laughs> I really would. It's, uh, yeah, have you done that? Have you, no. no, no, never, never. So that's, why that's why I asked, you know, how can people see it if it's down there, you know? But of course, you have to be able to dive if you're going to go to visit his museum yes. in Cancun. I suppose another way how you can view his work mm. is by all the videos you find on the internet but I would definitely recommend go and visit uh, Jason DeCari's website mm-hmm. it's very good it's easy to find www.underwatersculpturetogether.com or if you'd like to more, know more about my meeting with him online of course him from Mexico and I was here in London uh, my blog is always a good answer so it's sylviakrupinska.wordpress.com um, and you can find out more what happened and about sort of insight into sculpting processes that I'm quite keen on too. Mm. And you know, before you go, Sylvia, uh, do I hear something about Jason doing a sculpture on bicycles? Oh, yes, mentioning that. He already done a sculpture uh, in Grenada, actually. Mm. Uh, there's a cyclist six meters, meters below the sea level mm-hmm. attached to a bicycle uh, looking like he's cycling through the rocks and the bicycle's been the the wheels have been filled in with the cement Mm -hmm. and the whole sculpture is is really accessible for the divers in clear waters only after a few weeks after it'd been installed the 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 corals kind of bringing themselves in and attaching and the seaweed and uh, yeah it's quite truly spectacular experience if you're into that sort of thing yeah wow like Sylvia said if you want to find out more about 
about Jason DeCaris Taylor. His website address is all the W's dot underwater sculpture dot com. And of course, Sylvia's work and also her interview with Jason can be found and on her blog, which is Sylvia, please. Sylvia Krupinska dot WordPress dot com. Lovely. Thank you so much for that, Sylvia. We look forward to speaking to you next month. I can't wait and see you then. Thank you. You're listening to Colourful. This-